People today in healthcare know their patient through claims, but they don't actually know their customer. And the customer is that 100% of the population. They don't understand the psychosocial aspects of that member, they don't know how to connect with them. And if you look at other industries, they have undertaken the time to understand the customer. They have high customer satisfaction rates. And as we've seen, healthcare satisfaction rates, particularly with health plans and with facilities, are among the lowest of all industries and it really starts with just knowing your customer. You then have to understand, using big data, how to engage that member. You have to understand, are they likely to participate or are they not? Are they likely to participate in the future if they aren't ready to participate now? You have to be able to engage them in a way that's meaningful to them. You have to use that first 30 seconds of a conversation if you're talking to them over the phone to connect with them in a way that's meaningful to them. And as you look at outside data sources and use consumer segmentation techniques that are used in other industries, it's a very effective way of understanding what drives that member, how best to connect with them and be effective. From an operational perspective, one of the biggest issues is show rates, and that means what's the percentage of time that the member actually shows up for the appointment that's been scheduled for a telephonic intervention. Sometimes that may be as low as 60%, and if the member starts to see value out of the conversation that they're having with the nurse or the coach, a lot more people are willing to show up for that next appointment, and all of a sudden you're effectively using your resources on both the clinical side and on the wellness coaching side. You also want to be able to look at your providers and understand how to best communicate with your providers. They're a critical part of the equation, just as the member is and just as the health insurer is. And so you have to understand how to connect with that provider. If there's gaps that his membership needs to close, what's the best way to communicate with them? It may not be by email, it may be through a portal. Everybody's different and you have to understand what that impact is. And ultimately it comes down to measuring results. The star ratings, the HEDIS ratings, and all those things come down to can you measure outcomes, both clinical and from a financial perspective. And you have to have outside data sources to help you be able to measure that effectively. The key to everything in healthcare comes down to analytics. You have to understand the what first. Once you understand the what is the issue, then your folks who are very good at operations and process can figure out the how and address the issue head on. But the analytics has to be happen first in order to come up with the information that's required to solve the problems. Revenue optimization is trying to determine how you can maximize or optimize the payments you get from third parties when it comes to Medicare Advantage plans and also the exchanges. Under the Medicare Advantage plans, there's two pieces where you can optimize your revenue. The first is the star ratings. In order to maximize your revenue under the star ratings, you want to be able to have a star rating from CMS of 4.0 or higher. 62% of today's plans have a rating lower than 4.0, and as a result of that, they're actually losing the 5% bonus payment that they've received from the government over the last few years. For health plans, that can be $50 million or more potentially in lost revenue for the government for fairly sizable plans. The other part of it happens to do with the hierarchical condition classification factors, and that has to do with the coding of Medicare Advantage members and trying to match up what their actual condition is versus what you're going to get reimbursed for the government. So if a physician just codes somebody as a diabetic and they happen to have three or four additional conditions, the health plan wants to make sure that that's acknowledged because they're going to receive a much higher reimbursement for the government for the riskier member. And so there's another revenue opportunity that the health plan needs to capitalize upon. 
The last piece of it is, as you look at how exchangers are set up, there's actually an inherent risk arbitrage opportunity if you can manage certain conditions at a more effective rate than you're getting paid for by the exchange. And so if you happen to be very effective at managing diabetes versus what you're getting paid for, then you're going to want to take advantage of that risk arbitrage opportunity and attract diabetics to your plan and be able to manage them much more effectively than you're getting reimbursed from the government or the exchange.